Stephen Friend went to Harvard, and we all know the best people went to Harvard. He was, <laughs> he was on the faculty at Harvard, so he was actually superior to me. Are they running now? Is there... Founding a company that was premised on the idea of uh, having open tools and platforms that allowed researchers to share data. Yeah, because then they'll throw some of this in. If we do um, a good job here, um... they'll throw it in. But he's now at Apple, also helping them figure out what makes sense in healthcare. What I will call him is a true Bell Lab, sir, even though it's his first uh, visit here. So uh, welcome to the stage, Stephen, and we look forward to this very much. Through the ages, we have gone to individuals, uh, priestly experts, who um, we go to get healed. Um, I think we go to the Cardiac, uh, uh, cardiac surgeon the way our forebears always went to uh, shamans and, and medicine men. We go saying, um, I'm in trouble and I want you to heal me. There's an issue here which is that what begins, and I as a physician have uh, noted this in the last year a couple of times when, when some things happened to me, there's this weird thing that our brain does where we go, okay, tell me what to do. Um, there's an asymmetric dialogue that actually gets set up with the physician, and it's almost uh, uh, like a, a, a bargain or where the, the idea is, I am here, if you heal me, I'll, I'll follow your orders. I'm, I'm gonna admit I don't know what's going on, and in return, you're gonna heal me. And that has um, some power. You sort of, okay, you, you deal with it. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to, at the same time, it prevents individuals from owning where they are and feeling uh, you know, with themselves and, and, and empowered. We're at a point in medicine where we have a lot of data, but we're still using ancient recipes uh, and correlations more than causation. Is that a fair summary or what would you say it another way? It's uh, quite fair. Um, the uh, idea of having recipes that actually say this is what you should do um, has a, 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 a very significant uh, aha moment, which was that almost all the things that a physician says, you should try this, you yes, should do that, yes. come from these recipe books that are built on a, a, a fundamental assumption that everyone is the same. So if I take a thousand yeah. people and I study them and they had this happen to them, that applies to you. And, 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 and so the, the, that's not true. I dream about changing how guidelines are set. The, the reason why the experts are experts is that they know how to refer to recipes that have been uh, done very likely not on you. <laughs> okay. So who says that that actually is something that's going to help you? And so the alternative is to say, I wonder if there's a way where those who get sick are the ones who build the knowledge base. It's sort of odd that in this uh, 21st century, the decision making uh, goes in by these recipe books that are, um, in the past we learned this and that uh, happened. Which is the way the system works. Absolutely. It wastes all that money. I think we should fundamentally ask, is the way that dialogue that goes on between a person and uh, a, a, an expert um, well, worth uh, a shift. My version of your story, by the way, is the following. I go to a doctor once a year. Well, I actually don't go to a doctor once a year, but if I went to a doctor, Stay I'd go away. once a year. Stay away from yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and, and I would tell them what I currently felt like yep. and inaccurately, because it would probably be a description of symptoms but not causes. Uh, and in fact, it's probably overblown because I'm feeling sick. And maybe even a little denial. A little denial, so I'd deny some of the things I'm a little bit more worried about. You know, my left leg isn't hurting really, <laughs> exactly. when in fact that's, that's the major problem. Right. And then within 15 minutes, they would attempt to diagnose something based on almost no data, and in fact it's distorted bias data, which is my interpretation of what I'm feeling. And I have no historical log of, exactly. of whether uh, I have come to this condition uh, slowly over time, and it's suddenly exponentially ramped, or whether it appeared truly as a binary function or it's been there forever. And it's just now age has caused it to express itself. Uh, and so that's a terrible medical system because it's not based on knowledge and fact, it's based on inference based on incorrect presentation of erroneous data. Yeah, a great portal for entry to care. <laughs> exactly. Most of the treatments that are, you know, the trillions of dollars that are spent on, on uh, disease, most of that are for symptoms, not the actual disease. 
And when you get a treatment for a disease, it's mostly this will help you. Uh, there's a 30%, there's an 80% chance this will help you. There, there's not a knowledge this is going to help you. And often it's looking at symptoms. How am I going to treat that symptom? So I'm going to argue that actually that contract is OK, but it's not uh, like working the way you would normally have a contract working. We should ask, are there other ways to do that? And I know you've started a project called uh, the Resilience Project, where the attempt is to look at the people who didn't have the condition, yet having the predisposition genetically. These, the resilient individuals that we found um, out of that half million, the dozen or yeah. so, um, why they are um, those anomalies are, are so valuable is in those individuals, we have to mine the information that is everything but that mutation. The mutation that sits in them is one that should have caused cystic fibrosis. It yeah. should have been one that would have resulted in death before that person was five. The fact that this person uh, made it to 30 years of age, they were an adult, and they did not have that, um, it, it's worth pouring the resources. Into those to 10 that. or 15 people. Exactly. It's amazing. In uh, the late 80s, 90s, um, during the uh, AIDS epidemic, some astute clinicians realized that some of the individuals um, who had high levels of HIV, had the virus in them, were not getting AIDS. And uh, they began mapping the genomes of those individuals, looking for what was there. And what they noticed was that there was a protein that acted like a receptor at the surface. This receptor was the way that the virus got into the white cells. So if you have a mutation there and you can't get, the virus can't get into the white cells, you're not going to get uh, AIDS. The lens switched to, why don't we start looking at those people who should have gotten sick and didn't get sick. We take uh, maps and uh, contour maps uh, into account when we're trying to navigate uh, to a physical space uh, where we're going places. The ability to actually have a similar contour map for um, what decisions I'm taking, what, what is it that uh, if I do this, will it head me towards this or that potential problem, yeah. is um, a reasonable model for what you wish you could do when you take any action uh, where you go, I'm going to exercise but not too much, or I'm going to eat this or that. And I think the thing we have to remember is that um, we're not going in one dimension. It's not, I'm going to get to Alzheimer's or I'm going to get to diabetes. In fact, what you have is many peaks exactly. of possible outcomes. That's right. And navigating that is is unique to your genetic code. You would like to know if I go and I meditate, or if I go and I run, or if I go and I do this, is that moving me towards or, or not towards there? And the way to do that um, is probably not to use the existing cohort studies that are used, but instead to come up with a new way of collecting data. We need an individual-based exploratorium in which to assemble the data is it's only from that and those that are closest to you, your doppelgangers, that you're going to be able to know, is that something I should pay attention exactly. to? Exactly. So, so it lends itself to the idea of uh, with uh, IoT and wearable devices, if that data is shared, uh, you can find your similarity, your, your mm -hmm. three-dimensional health map, future map, better than without that data. Measuring more is good, and so wearables are part of that, probably. Would you, would you agree? Um, completely. I mean, you can imagine that if you had a good fraction of the population contributing what was happening as they did this, as they did that. When yeah. I take the, this food in, or I take this vitamin, and you had all that data, and you go, um, you're like this person, you're like that. You take those two things into account, you should be able to get to where you could. Uh, exactly. If, if the human landscape is a multidimensional landscape of hills and valleys and and predispositions, and you can find the map that looks like you, and you can navigate that map uh, with guidance. You have a shaman, a doctor, a professional that guides you, because you need a little bit to know how to navigate this map. It's a complex space. Uh, that makes tremendous sense, right? And the sensors bring that ability to say, um, I didn't think that this happened to me. I might have recollected, it gives, uh, there's an agency, but there's also an objective um, power. Um, I, I, this is what happened to me. It, it, I, not, not uh, it's what I said happened to me. Pretty remarkable we do it the way we do it today. It is. It's, it's, uh, it's odd when, when uh, framed the way you do, and it's always the trick, is frame the problem in the correct way, and you, you, it's the sort of the emperor's new clothes. Yep. You reveal the folly of the approach by, by pointing out the, the correct framing. Yep. 
So thanks very much, Stephen. It's been delightful having you here. As I said, it was one of the bravest, most wide-ranging talks I've ever seen, and it was a phenomenal experience to be uh, listening to that. So thank you very much. Thanks for giving me that opportunity. Oh, you're quite welcome. Yep. Thank you.